All right, hi everybody. Today is my 47th birthday. And last year I did a little review on what my year was like. So I wanted to do that again today. I wrote down some key things here, things that are, things that are key for me that you probably care about. Um, competitions, my kids, my family, granite, my supplement company, training, and diet. Um, and then the last one is going to be my goals for next year. So just want to go through these and let you know what happened during my year. Every year I like to kind of just think about, you know, where did I do well? Where did I not do so well? And what can I do better the next year? Competition wise, this one's easy. I didn't compete last year. I had a lot going on, especially with my kids, as I'm getting ready to tell you about. Um, I still continue to train hard, but I did not compete, so I can't really talk about my competitions and my prep and things like that. I did continue, um, you know, as you know, I still uh, involved with a coaching business, and I have, I don't know, probably 10, 15 pros and 20, 25 people aren't pros that I work with. I keep a pretty small group of people. Um, so I did a lot of competition prep, just not on myself, which was okay. Now, where I spent a lot of time last year was with my kids. So last year, they participated in soccer for the first time. They participated in football, this full pads, all out football for the first time, and they participated in basketball. So when they started in soccer, it was their first official year in soccer. And um, quite frankly, they were little um, shell shocked. I don't think they really knew how to play or what was going on, which makes total sense because I never taught them and we don't watch it on TV. But it was really awesome during the year to see them get better and better and better. And by the end of the year in the last game, for example, Jonathan scored five goals in the last game. <clears throat> they actually had to put him at goalie because he was scoring so easy. He's one of the fastest kids out there. Really good uh, hand foot coordination. And Alexander's skills really grew tremendously as well. And then they came to football. Now, I love football. I love football my whole life. I started watching it very intensely when I was seven, eight years old. I remember the 1980 Super Bowl like it was yesterday. I was eight years old watching that, the Eagles and Raiders. So they started in football. And again, they were really unsure. This is full contact football. I live in a town called Pickerington, Ohio. It's a suburb of Columbus. And the two of the top football teams in the state are right here in Pickerington. In fact, one of them is a mile down the road from me. But Pickerington Central, they were the state champions two years ago. The other Pickerington, Pickerington North, is also a really solid team. L let me just tell you, they take their football real serious down here. So they started in football this year, full pads. The coaches were awesome. They were excellent. Really good coaches. They taught them the fundamentals, how to tackle, how to use their hands when they block, how to how to uh, you know just move laterally front to back just really really good coaches so their football season was awesome this is one of the best memories of my entire life their football team did great so um, they only lost one game during the year and they lost in overtime there was they only gave up one touchdown all year and it was to the team that beat them in overtime and then during the playoffs they made it back to play with that team uh, again for the title now I gotta tell you a little bit about this. I really, really, really wish I would have videotaped this game because it was the most exciting football game I've ever seen. So we spent that week changing the defense up. Basically, we went from a 5-2 to a 4-3, for those of you who watch football. First play of the game, the other team runs off a 65-yard touchdown. So this is, remember, this is the defense that only gave up one touchdown all season and it was an overtime. So, uh, it was a little deflating. So we played one play in that new defense that we practiced all week. Then we went back to our 5-2. So we were good. We caught up. We, we were just a little bit behind at halftime, maybe 8-6 to six or something like that. So then in the second half, we're getting near the end of the game. The other team was up still by two points. I want to say it was 14-12. to 12. And they basically could have ran the clock out. But they handed it off to one of their kids. He ran off tackle. He busted it for like 50 yards. He got a touchdown. So it was 20 to 12. All right. They went for the two-point conversion. They got tackled at the one-yard line, and they missed it. So we got the ball back with somewhere between one and two minutes left, like a minute and a half. So 
we ran a play 15 yards, another play 10 or 15 yards, another play 10 or 15 yards. So we get down to like their 10 yard line and there's like 20 seconds left. Probably got enough room for one more play because we're out of timeouts. So we ran off tackle. The kid made an incredible play. He dove in the end zone, barely made it in, made it 20 to 18. So then we had to make the two point conversion. We made the two point conversion. So it was 20 to 20 and we forced overtime. So then in overtime, the other team scored, and then they missed their extra point. And then we scored, and we were thinking, okay, we got it, we got the extra point, we're gonna win, but we missed the extra point. So it was 26 to 26. Pretty sure that's what the score was. Something like that. And then we got the ball first, and we got a touchdown in the second overtime, and made it 32 to 26. And honestly, we were pretty much like, man, it's going to be really hard to stop these guys. And if they make the two-point conversion, they're going to win. So long story short, we stopped them four straight plays, stuffed them, and we won the game in double overtime, 32 to 26. Now, I'm a psycho dad on the sideline. So I'm running around like crazy. The parents went onto the field like it was the Rose Bowl. It was unbelievable. That's how football is done here. So that was the most incredible football game I've ever seen. And then they, then the kids went into basketball, a new sport for them. They didn't know what a double dribble was or a travel. Just like with soccer and football, you could see them getting better and better and better as the year went on. And then by the end of the year, they were, you know, two really, really tough kids. Um, you know, they, they were scoring a lot at the end, but it was just, as a parent, it's awesome watching their kids improve and get better and better. That's what I spent most of my time doing last year, I would say, is being involved with my kids' sports. From a, just an overall family perspective, we didn't go anywhere on vacation. The year before, we went to Grand Cayman, we went to Aruba, we went to California, we took some nice vacations. We didn't take any this year, but um, coming up, we've got a trip scheduled to California again, and then we're gonna go somewhere in September. We'll see where, where we go, but it'll be on some, some island somewhere. Um, the other update I want to give you is on Granite. That's a supplement company that I own. Um, Granite was kind of in a law. We were kind of stuck. We were kind of flatlined. We weren't really growing. But in the last like two months, the growth has picked back up. We've had some really, really awesome chains. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, in Virginia, um, Doug Miller's, uh, comp uh, his stores down there. And... Um, so the Grana business is really, really picking up. It's doing really well now. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys will look that up and check out the supplements we have. The supplement business is really tough. It's taught me a lot of business lessons. Um, some of the lessons were pretty painful, but they were tremendous business lessons. And I had an opportunity to look at some other business ventures this year. And I looked at them with a totally different perspective, a much more educated perspective, having been through some really tough times. So I really value the kind of the ups and downs of owning that business. It's really taught me a lot about companies and what to look for um, because I'm always kind of looking for companies to invest in and things like that. So real good experience. Granite's kind of turned around. Um, we're doing really well now after being stagnant for a while. Uh, so for all the stores out there that have supported us, all the consumers, all of you that have bought our products, I really, really appreciate it. And we have, we do have some, some plans to deliver some new stuff this year as well. In terms of my training, people always ask me, well, you know, how are you training now? What are you doing? I'm still training really, really hard, really hard. What I did this year was I played around with the volume of what I did, I had, you typically my training is just a little bit more high volume year round, but I did some phases this year where I brought the number of work sets down. I just made sure the work sets that I did were brutally hard. And like anything else, it worked for a while. Then I got kind of stale. So I went back to high volume and that's where I'm at now. Eventually that'll get stale and I'll go back to a little lower volume. I think the main thing with training, and I find this to be true with just about everybody, as long as you're hitting really, really hard sets, that's what really makes a difference. I think people are still getting too infatuated with how many sets should I do? How many times a week should I train a body part? Those are all great questions, but until you can really drive your intensity and your effort, those questions really don't even matter if your goal is to maximize hypertrophy and look really good anyway. 
Um, as far as injuries, I did have one injury this year. I was doing some incline barbell presses with 275, a weight that I can normally do for 10 to 12 reps. And I felt a pull, my right pec. You guys probably saw the picture, it was black and blue for two weeks. There's no visible deformity or anything like that. It healed, it's fine now, but it did scare me. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it did scare me because if I would have done one more rep, I probably would have had a full uh, pec tear. And I've seen so many pec tears over the years that uh, it was scary. I didn't do another barbell for four months. I just now started doing a little bit of barbell work and I haven't went over 225. So I continue to train. Um, I've built some more programs I put on the website. I put a low volume program out on the website called Colossus that people are absolutely going crazy over. Uh, we've sold a couple thousand of them and the feedback has been really, really good if you want to check that out. In terms of diet, uh, what I do during a year with my diet, I didn't really have a plan. I just, you know, you got to realize I went for probably 30 years of eating six meals a day and been really regimented and that's good. That's why I was successful in bodybuilding, being so regimented to where really there was really no thought process. It was more just habit than it was thinking. But um, not competing, I didn't put myself on a clock. I ate when I was hungry. I ate the breakfast that I wanted. Those of you who are watching on my Instagram probably see me post my two eggs and my two pieces of toast, probably more than you want to see. But that's my typical breakfast. You know, and then I get all the questions, that's not enough protein, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Look, I feel great when I eat that breakfast and I'll continue to eat it. But I haven't really monitored anything too closely. My protein is very low compared to what it used to be. My calories, I don't really monitor it. Um, but I've been able to maintain. I did not grow last year. I didn't get bigger, but I didn't get smaller either and I didn't get weaker. I've maintained. And it's interesting because when you train for so many years, it's a lot easier to maintain than to build. It was really hard for me to build a lot of muscle over the years, very difficult. But to maintain it is a different ball game. You can maintain your muscle really well, and even with a maybe not a lot of calories, as long as your training intensity is really good, which is one of the interesting things I've found working with a lot of people who are a little bit older, is the ones who have trained a long time, they can hold their muscle real easy. So that was one of the things that uh, I enjoyed about my diet this year. Um, I still, you follow a 90-10 rule, 90% of my meals are pretty healthy and, and what we would call clean, but 10% I'm having fun. I'm posting the ones that I'm having fun about, so people think that's all I eat, but the reality is I still eat pretty healthy. But um, so diet-wise, it almost felt like I got out of prison. Like I can eat when I want, I don't have to eat at 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Um, again, nothing against that approach, I did it for over 30 years. Um, but it was nice to just kind of relax a little bit. And maybe one of the reasons, I was talking about this with uh, my training partner today, maybe one of the reasons why I have done so well this year is just because of lower stress. Maybe the lower stress of not worrying so much about the perfect diet and, and training um, all out seven days a week, maybe just pulling things back and having low stress is actually a really beneficial thing, imagine that. Um, I'm going to finish with my goals for next year. So I'll just really, I'll go, it's really the same stuff. So in terms of competitions, I'm 50-50. I've thought about competing in New York next year. I've actually actually thought about competing in California this year in November. But um, there's something that I like about New York. That's where I got my pro card. When I've competed there in the past, I've had tremendous support. There's just something about New York. So I may compete at the New York Pro next year but I also love California. So I may, I am considering a show in California in November. <clears throat> so um, in order to do that, I'd have to be 212 though. And that's something I'm not entirely comfortable with doing, dropping down that low in body weight again. As far as my kids go, they just, they just started their second season of soccer. They're doing the same rotation. They're gonna do soccer, football, and basketball. And with a, with a year under their belt, I'm really excited to see what they can do. We've also started working on um, some of their training. It's mostly plyometric type activity to generate force. When you look at the best athletes, they're the ones that can generate force the fastest, change direction the fastest, things like that. So I'm trying to teach them by doing, you know, box jumps, long jumps, single leg hops, just things like that that uh, can really teach your body to absorb force and transfer force, to generate force quickly, and things like that. So you'll see this year me doing more and more and more stuff with my kids. For, for my family, again, I said we're going on some vacations this year. 
So we want to continue to do things and have fun. Um, sometimes I travel a lot for, for granted and it's nice to be home and I do a lot of seminars. I just did a seminar in Australia. I've got another seminar coming up in two months in Manchester, England. So uh, what I would like to do is the next seminar I do after that, I'd like to take my family with me to, do, to, to go to that seminar so we can turn it into a vacation. For granted, I have big plans. You're going to see me talking more about Granite, our formulas, and what we're doing. I'm very proud of the company. I know a lot of people hate supplements. I've actually, I actually have loved supplements my whole life. I understand why people don't like them because I understand the quality that's out there, being involved in the industry, and I can definitely see why people get frustrated. But I'm going to work really hard on Granite, and I'm, I've already got store appearances all through June and part of July scheduled, so I'll be out there visiting with a lot of stores. I'll be in Philadelphia, I'll be in New York, I'll be in Boston, um, just I'll be in Virginia, I'll be all over the place. Training, um, you, you can look for me to do the same thing. There are, um, there's a type of intensity that I'm always gonna keep. I'm not gonna get away from it. I just gotta be careful not to get injured. And with my diet, um, it depends. If I pick one of those shows, and I will go back to that regimented six, day, six meals a day. I will go back and I will do that. But until then, I'm just going to have fun eating. So that's a little bit of, about how my year went. I would say the highlight of the year was the kids' football game. Like when someone says, what was your best part of last year? It was definitely that football championship. Um, that was awesome. That was phenomenal. That's my best memory of the year. Probably the toughest memory was probably just going through some struggles with Granite and um, just business struggles, um, but that's turned around and that's, that's going well this year too. So I fully anticipate that on being one of the best things uh, next year that I talk about. So hopefully the, um, you enjoyed that, just to get a little insight on how my year went. Uh, how did your year go? What was the number one highlight of your year and maybe what frustrated you the most? Sometimes those things that are hard teach you really awesome lessons the hard lessons I learned last year all will make me a better person. And I don't wish I didn't have those things happen because they, all those things make you a better person. They make you who you are. So when you guys are challenged with bad situations, bad relationships, bad businesses, all that kind of stuff, try to learn from it, try to grow from it. Some of the best business owners I know have had a lot of failures, but they've learned from them. Um, one of my friends that owned uh, Best Bar, Mike Clay, you guys may know. Mike is one of the smartest, best business guys I know. Same with David Tate, the guy that owns Elite FTS. Those guys had some failures along the way, but they kept going. They learned from them, and now they're mentors of mine, actually. They're really, really talented business guys. So thanks for watching. I appreciate all your support in the last year. The channel has grown a lot. We're super happy with it. Um, we wouldn't be where we're at without you. So... Thanks, and we'll see you next time. If you like that video, I know you're gonna love my app available on the Google Play Store for Android, iPhones, and the Apple Store. There's so much information on here, it's amazing. Training, workouts, hundreds of workouts, nutrition methodology questions, chemical enhancement, supplementation, client prep, and a Q&A button. Check it out.